Hey, how's it going everybody? And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to mod a Nintendo Switch. Uh, I've never made a video like this before, but I've noticed that there's not really many videos on uh, YouTube showing how to mod a Switch. And recently uh, there's a huge update to everything uh, and uh, a lot of things are a bit different than how they used to be. So I'm kind of here to walk everyone uh, through how to mod a Switch step by step. And it's also gonna include Smash mods, like the training mod pack and a few cosmetic skins, just to walk you guys through and see how to do it for the future. So we're gonna need to mod a switch. The first thing you're gonna need is obviously a switch. It's gonna need to be unpatched, which we'll go over in just a minute. You're gonna need a micro SD card. I'd recommend 64 gigs or more. I'm using one with 128. Uh, and then you're also gonna need something to plug your micro SD card into your PC. I'm using this. I'll link it down in the description below as with everything else we go over in this tutorial. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing that's absolutely essential to do is to check if your Switch is actually moddable as is. The way we're going to do this is go to ismyswitchpatch.com and we're going to check the serial code of your Switch. The way you can do this is by checking the bottom of your Switch right there on that white bar, and or you can go into system settings and find it there. But what you're going to want to do is throw in the prefix of it and follow up with the first six serial digits. Uh, if you get this white bar, unfortunately this tutorial will not work for you. Your switch is patched and you're going to have to take a few extra steps which I'm not going to be demonstrating here. However, if you get this green bar right here, your switch is not patched, you're good to go and this tutorial will work properly for you. Um, the second thing that's absolutely essential for this tutorial is this RCM paper clip. Uh, this is going to short circuit your switch and actually allow it to boot into safe mode where we can boot off of the mod files that we are going to be downloading up next. So now that we're ready to download everything, what we're going to want to make sure of first is that your micro SD card is actually compatible with your Switch. Uh, the easiest way to do this is if you've already used it with your Switch to before and actually already have games on it, you're good to go. There's no problem with that. However, if this is a fresh micro SD card and you've never used it before, I'd suggest just throwing it into your Switch and then going to settings, scrolling all the way down to system settings, then going to formatting options and then format your micro SD card. This will just make sure that's formatted the way that your Switch wants it to be and it's going to be good to go uh, for when we want to throw everything uh, that we download here into it. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to want to download is on sdsetup.com. What we're going to do is we're just going to select the recommended defaults that this uh, app suggests and we're just going to scroll all the way down and download the zip file for uh, SD setup. And what we're going to want to do is now up next, Atmosphere just came out with a new version and this is where things are going to get a little bit complicated for Smash users. Uh, we need a plugin called Skyline which we're going to have to manually install now which isn't too difficult. So we're going to want to do is scroll down to the bottom here and download Atmosphere. Uh, up next, we're going to need to download the main bootloader. This is going to be what mainly loads the mods and everything, which is Hikate. We're going to download right that right there through the zip file on top. And then up next, we're going to need to download Tegra. Uh, what Tegra is, is it's going to actually be a file on your computer, which is going to put the Hikate into your Switch uh, and actually load up everything when the time comes. Uh, there are two ways you can install this. You can install via the installer or the portable.zip. I personally did the portable.zip, but there is one extra step that you're going to have to take when the time comes, which I will show you. This next part is going to be for Smash users in particular. Uh, the first thing that we're going to want is going to be this dive into modding. Uh, this is actually going to be the new Skyline. Uh, it's under the release.zip. Uh, the second thing that we're going to want is uh, I'm going to be getting the training mod pack. This is just a good thing overall. I, I recommend it to all Smash players. It's very helpful. And now we're going to have to download two things for this. The Skyline for the training mod pack and the training mod pack.zip itself. Uh, it's going to be very useful as we're going to just need it to uh, boot, throw that into Atmosphere and make everything compatible and function properly. Uh, now I'm going to download a skin. I'm going to download Kingdom Hearts Cloud in honor of Sora being released very recently. That and I think the skin is generally pretty cool overall. And I'm going to be downloading Mr. L. Luigi. I think the skin's sick as well. But this one actually, uh, you throw into your uh, Switch a little bit differently than the other ones. Uh, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. Just so everyone has a good uh, idea of how to actually throw all different types of skins, cosmetics, or music into your Switch uh, for the Smash Mods and actually be able to load them properly. So now that we have everything downloaded for the Switch and then we also have our micro SD card compatible, what your micro SD card should look like if you put it in your Switch before and loaded something on it, uh, should you just have this Nintendo folder which we are going to keep there. Uh, but now we're just going to start installing the things that we downloaded into our Switch for modding. Uh, the first thing that we're going to be dragging in is going to be this Atmosphere folder. Uh, you're just going to want to drag in these bottom three files right here. Then we're good to go with that. And up next what we're going to do is we're going to be dragging in Hikate thing here is we're only going to be dragging in the bootloader. 
This thing right here, you can either throw on your desktop or just throw somewhere on your computer. This is what we're actually going to boot up with Tegra. Uh, since I got the Tegra portable.zip, I'm going to be dragging it into that folder right there as opposed to just on my desktop. However, you can throw anyone on your computer as long as Tegra can access it. All right, so up next, what we're going to want to do is actually go to SD setup and we're going to want to drag in these two files right here just into our switch. All right, once you're complete with that, uh, this is only for Smash modding now. What we're going to want to do is open up the new version of Skyline, which is the release file. And we're just going to drag this into the root of our SD card and it will naturally merge. Uh, if anything needs to be copied over, it shouldn't be, uh, but you can just copy it over and there's no big deal there. Uh, so now we're going to download the first mod pack, uh, which is going to be the training mod pack. Uh, what we're going to just do is we're just going to want to drag in just the atmosphere folder. We don't need the Mac OX one. Drag in the atmosphere folder. And up next, we're actually gonna need the skyline for the training mod pack. Uh, this one is double zipped up for whatever reason, but that's how you know it's for the training mod pack. Uh, and then what we're gonna wanna do, is we're gonna actually wanna open up our atmosphere folder here and go into contents and open up this folder right here. And we're just gonna be dragging in the exefs folder right into that and we're good to go. Now we can add one of the skins that we downloaded. We can start with the Kingdom Hearts Cloud one. That's gonna be the easiest. So what we're going to want to do for most skins, what you're going to do is you're going to make a new folder, title it Ultimate. Uh, it is case sensitive, I believe, so I just recommend keeping it that way. Uh, just named as Ultimate, uh, but that's up to you. I'm not too sure. Someone can test that out. And up next, we're going to need the mods folder in it. Uh, this is just going to be where we actually throw our mods. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to open up this Kingdom Hearts Cloud mod. And I'm going to be dragging this just straight into the switch. All right, so now we have Kingdom Hearts Cloud in here. Uh, this is how you're going to be installing most of the mods uh, for most of the things, uh, but you can just basically just copy paste this method for all the skins pretty much, except for a few of them, and I'm going to be showing you how to do that now. Mr. L. Luigi is one of the exceptions to this. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open it up, and you're going to see this arc folder. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Atmosphere. We're going to go to Contents. We're going to go to the here. And we're going to open up Romps. And here, all we're going to do is drag this arc folder into the ROMPS folder. Uh, basically, uh, you're going to throw every other skin you want in here in the same arc folder. However, uh, this one came with the arc folder, so I didn't need to make a new one. But from now on, basically, if you want a new skin, uh, you're going to need to just throw any of the fighter or UI details in there for uh, when you want to uh, add new ones that need to go through Arcropolis in the first place like that. All right, so one last thing that we are actually going to need to do is we're going to need to edit one of the files that we currently just downloaded. And so how we're going to do that is we're going to go to the SD folder that we got from SD setup. We're going to go to the bootloader. And we're going to go to the Sakate underscore IPL file. We're going to open that up and then everything we see here, we're just going to copy over and delete. And we're going to copy over what we have currently held over here. We're going to paste that into this notepad file. And you're going to want to make sure to say that where you do control S or file save. However you do that is up to you as long as it gets saved into here. Now this last part's going to seem pretty weird, but we're actually going to just need to eject the micro SD card. Uh, make sure to do that properly using the eject button. If you don't, you risk corrupting your micro SD card and we definitely don't want that. Uh, but this won't be the final time we're going to need to have our micro SD card in our PC. As with this latest version, there is a weird issue where you actually have to boot it up once, then you have to close it, then you get to re pull up the micro SD card back on your uh, PC. And we're going to edit one more file after that and we'll be good to go to actually run all of our mods and stuff. So we're going to start by uh, ejecting the micro SD card, make sure to do that properly. And once that's done, we're going to end up opening Tegra. And for those of you that use the portable.zip, we're going to go to this APX driver folder, double click that, and just make sure you installed the file driver for Tegra, because that's going to actually, you know, make sure your computer recognizes your switch and puts in the payload when it needs to. Uh, we're good to open up Tegra now, and let's make sure we get our micro SD card in our switch, and we're also going to need the RCM paperclip now. Now that we have our micro SD card back in our switch, what we're going to do is remove that right Joy-Con from your switch. And now we're going to use this little RCM clip and we're going to slide that into the right of the right Joy-Con slot of the switch like so. Uh, and now we're going to make sure is uh, in Tegra, we have to make sure we have the right file se selected. It's going to be that bin file that we put in earlier, that Hikate file, wherever you put on your PC, whether you put in your desktop or in that Tegra folder like I did. I put my Tegra folder, so I'm just going to do that and click that. And now it's open like that. So what we're going to want to do now is we're going to boot our switch into safe mode. How we're going to do that is hold the plus button and power button for like two seconds. And we're going to want to plug our switch into our PC now. And once your switch is plugged in your PC, your Windows will probably prompt you like so. And now all you're going to do is once it says RCM OK and you have that payload selected, we're going to inject the payload. 
as you can see here your switch is going to be booting up and the first time you load it, it's going to show the date and time i'm just going to skip past that process for the moment and once you click on here it's going to say no no main boot entries found uh, this is how it's been recently for me so what i've been doing is we're just going to turn our switch back off now that we've loaded it once and we're going to be throwing our micro sd card back into our pc uh, the best way to turn off your switch is just to hold the power button until it turns off and now we can take out that micro sd card again and we can do the last step now that we have our micro sd card back into our switch we're just going to kind of almost repeat the last process that we did remember that uh file that we copied over in the bootloader folder this thing um, just make sure you have the same thing highlighted we're going to need that same code again but we can just exit out of this we don't need to go here and where we're going to go is we're going to go to the main bootloader folder this time and as you can see there are two new files here uh the nix and the hikate underscore ipl now this hikate underscore ipl what we're going to do is just copy over it and paste the one we copied from earlier and just save that as is and now we're good to eject our micro sd card for the final time and we're actually going to be able to run the mods on our switch now and now with the micro sd card back in our switch and the rcm clip still in there from before we're going to hold the plus button and the power button again for like two seconds and we're going to plug our switch back into our pc and once the switch is plugged back into the pc it's going to say rcm okay again like so and what we're going to end up doing is injecting the payload now, as you guys can see here, is we're going to get the same prompt as before. Uh, we're just going to pass by that for now and click cancel. I'm missing the button. And we're going to go to launch. As you can see now, we have three options here. We have uh, the EMU MMC, and then we have the first SYS, and we have the stock SYS option. What we're going to end up selecting is the second option, the FSS0 SYS option. And now our switch should be loading off of that, and then I'm going to be showing everything from my actual switch now in the dock. We no longer need the RCM clip in, so we can take that out, and we're going to just use our switch as normal. Now with our switch booted up like, like usual, we're actually good to run Smash now. And this process might take a little bit longer than usual to start up, but for the first time when you launch, it's actually going to be giving you a dialog prompt, as we will see in a second. See, this first one's going to be thanking us for installing the training mod pack. That's proof that we got the training mod pack in and good to go. It tells us that we can use the special button and up top button in order to in order to load that in training mode. So we're good to go with that. And now this is where the loading process might take a little bit longer. And we've also been thanked for installing our crop list, which is going to be all the skins that we have and everything like that. All right, now that our smash is loaded, what we're going to do is I'm just going to take you guys into training mode and we'll look at the actual skins that we have downloaded. And with this open, I'm just going to start by hovering over the Mr. Luigi. As you can see, that file is there and working. Uh, we can look at that in a second. And then we also got the cloud skin. As you guys can see here, this is the first Kingdom Hearts cloud, the second one, third and fourth. And that one had like a group of four skins in the mod pack. I'm going to boot up the Mr. Luigi one though, just to make sure that it works in game. Everything is good to go. Uh, the cloud one is functioning as well. And also it's important to make sure that the training mod pack is working as we wanted. As we can see the hitboxes are visualized and if we hold the up top and B button at the same time, we're gonna get this little prompt here and this is gonna be everything in the training mod pack that we can do. So that's gonna be everything. Uh, we got the skins, we got the training mod pack and everything we kind of wanted to go over in this tutorial. With that being said, that is going to be all for me today. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it to be helpful, be sure to drop a like and maybe subscribe to the channel for more future content like this. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, be sure to drop them down in the comments section below. I also do stream on Twitch occasionally, so if you guys want to catch me there, maybe even in my Discord, you guys can join the Discord and interact with the community and play some games even. Uh, both links will be down in the description. And uh, yeah, with that being said, that's going to be all today, and I will catch you guys all next time. Later.